Hot, steamy summer crappies. Where are they at? What are they doing? That's what we're tackling in today's video. Welcome back to the channel. Yes, y'all, we have basically peaked in summer and we have reached the hottest temperatures. It has been honestly too hot to even fish. Last couple of days in Texas, 105, 107, hardly any wind. You don't want to be touching anywhere near a dark colored seat in a bass boat. Speaking of hot and steamy, big sale coming up, goonsquad.com. We've got our last cast of summer sale. It's gonna be 40% off most items on the site and you get a free gift with every purchase over 50 bucks. And big savings on what we're calling our last cast bundle, which is about $80 worth of baits for 45 bucks. And we still got our pump and gas is catching basses merch available on the site as well. And you can use my promo code LFG, save even more at checkout. Tell them I sent you. Silver bullet, still got it. Still got a crack in it. We're gonna roll, we're gonna roll hard with it. Let her leak. However, yesterday I went and visited my old bud Lunkers and guess what we have? We have her back. The crispy is back y'all. Oh, brother Rob. He took it out. I think he took it to like Oklahoma or something and the tire blew out one of the tires blew out so the spare is currently gone the um he didn't have it all the way on the trailer either so it fell off and one of the chains uh busted off the battery i'm not sure what is going on it has a new battery it's not even in uh in a tray and we got some loose wiring going on he did fill it up with gas though that was that was quite nice of him. I think that's about it. Didn't put a scratch on it. Just, just those other things. Anyway, I am, uh, I am torn on selling this boat. You know, I kind of, I kind of need to sell this boat to pay for some, pay, pay for some things. Moving right now, trying to, to simplify. Uh, went hard on the electronics and batteries and stuff in the new boat. So I was kind of thinking this would, you know repurchase all that stuff but i just love this little thing and it's so good at dumping in small waters ponds creeks i kind of want to hang on to it she's uh she's got a little sentimental value too and we may end up using it again if we take our silver bullet in to get all fixed up has to get welded maybe get a new haul i don't even know we might be running around in the crispy again i know you guys like the crispy adventure videos so there might be more coming at you soon the truck and boat fit as the young kids would say it's sexy as hell the toe's so good guys love that little diesel man i'm getting consistently 18 mpgs um and i, I just did a little experiment before i fully dumped the boat in i just kind of kept the the front of the boat out of the water on the trailer just to see if any water was leaking in and there wasn't and now that the boat is actually in the water sitting uh there is there's water that is coming in the boat ergo the crack that is in the front of the hole that's that's where the water's coming in i don't think i have any other issues besides that it's just that one so if i had to pick one rod for crappie fishing overall if i was going to do forward i was going to do some uh, casting. I was going to do some bridge and dock fishing. I would probably pick something around, maybe even go over seven and a half foot. I'd probably, if I were to make a rod for crappie fishing to do, do it all, I'd probably make a 710, I'd probably make a 710 medium, medium light, fast action. And that would be my, my go-to for just doing everything. I've got a eight footer in my hands right here. I fish a seven foot a lot. It's a good overall, you know, just run the mill. And then I like to fish a, a 10 footer for like straight scoping, 12 foot gets, just gets a little weird, gets a little wonky. I'm looking for some eight pound fluorocarbon line got some in my little finesse bag right here sometimes i'll get down to six but overall it's it's eight for me in texas 
fishing Texas most of the time. Let's get out of plastic, shall we? What are we feeling? It's that time of year with a dart, dart in a tube. Now let's break out a jig head. One of the things I love about crappie fishing is you can keep it pretty simple. Don't have to get too complicated with crappies. I'm gonna rig up two rods, just one for now, but I'm gonna go with a 16th ounce for skipping and doing uh, kind of shallow brush piles, 12 to, you know, there's a, there's a lot of crappie that are suspended right now. Just 12 to 15 feet of water. I don't know what it is about 12 foot, but just about every lake. Creatures love to live in like 12 foot of water. It's like the perfect balance of light, oxygen. It's where they feel comfy in most lakes that are stained. When you get clear, it's different, but lakes that have that green tint to them, 12 foot. There's been studies on very large bass that live in green water that 12 foot is the most common for uh, bass over 10, 10 or 12 pounds, something like that. Around that 12 foot, it's where they like. Anyway, oh gosh. Okay, so here's what we're looking at here. I think these crappie are sitting under this ball of bait. They've got just a bunch of minnows wrangled up here. Cannot get it in there. Busted both the eyes out of my jig. That one went over. Now I'm hung. Oh yeah, we just absolutely did not do anything good there. All right, I am done with this situation. And I broke my leader, son of a... Re-rigging, going with an eighth ounce now. I'm getting out of these docks. Broken off a few times, reached the frustration limits. Everybody knows about that. Don't lie. And I'm going with the classic monkey milk dart. We're gonna go find something else that wants to eat that. Get it? Oh my gosh, that whole shot gets me every time. All right, first little spot here not a dock we're gonna roll up in a in the ditch of a pocket looking for hot sloppies hot sloppies ditch dwellers oh we got bait i mean the main thing that we're uh we're looking for is just something to hold crappie which doesn't have to be much and this time of year i'm i'm not really focusing on those individual like floater females. I'm just looking for the wads. Looking to get in, pop them, and move on to something else. So we got a pile right here. Looks, looks to be some activity in it. So what I'm gonna do is kind of drift past it. I'm gonna get into the wind to do my fishing. There's nothing better than crappie fishing and getting a big old sloppy green one as a bonus. That's, that's basically my life's, my life's achievement right there. The dual dangle. Dog it, man, I let it sink into the pile too much. A lot of littles on there. Oh, God, crop, he almost smashed it right there. The bigger one came out first. There he is. Wow, he almost like just swirled up to the top. There we go, there's a nice eater crop right there. A ditch, a ditch dweller. It's probably 11 or 12, just standard, standard unit. Okay, one crop in the box, moving around, just found something big out here. Kind of looks like a brush pile. 
using this turret, man. This is awesome. Foresight turret. Shout out to them. Foresight turret on the spot lock. We can we can keep on these offshore structures really good. But it appears that there are uh, a couple of large swimmers down there, and maybe a few uh, big crappie. Okay, my first move. I'm gonna go with a chubby grubby. Simple grub, swim it. The exciting thing is I've never looked at this brush before. Could be good, could not. We're about to find out. I'm telling you though, there are some sizable things on it. I think I have a bluegill. It's not what we want, but that is big bass candy. Big bass candy in the deeps. Pork chop for a bass. It's so thick, I'm just gonna try to swim the grub above it. Oh, just got hit again. Let's see what this is. Little crop. Little crop wanted the swim. Goodbye. Not gonna cut the mustard. Now the nice thing about that was, and this is something to look for when you first see brush on your on your forward or even on your 2D or down scan, it might look like there's not fish on it but there could be fish that are in there and if you swim your bait above it or just hold it above it a lot of times you'll see fish come out. At least you'll, you'll at least see bluegill or something come out of there. All right, little crops, don't wanna play. Bass, don't wanna play. Can't fish here? Got it. Everybody's telling you no, they're telling you to go. I just want to fish. I'm not doing anything wrong. It's not like I'm doing meth. I'm just singing a song. I just want to get a tug. It's the drug, but it ain't meth. So let me hug the waters and the fish. That's it. That's the single. Just got kicked out. No biggie. God, there was some absolute whopper hammers in there. Ooh. It's a lot of meatballs right there. I spooked one. I spooked a little buddy. Okay, I've been wanting to catch one on this little rig all day. Oh my gosh, he came to the sur he came to the surface. I don't know if you guys saw that. There are some juicy booties in here. Fartfit Nugan. It's just gonna be a nice, nice break off. To oh my god. My line broke. 10 pound braid broke about four feet out from the spool. Oh, they're gonna be tricky. They're gonna be tricky on here. Oh, there's my line too. My gosh, what a day. What a day we're having. Okay, biggins. Biggins on the prowl, come on. Not gonna do it, swinging too fast. She needs the finesse approach. Golly. Got him. Big and dang, big, oh, big, just kind of mouthed it. I don't know, that was weird, but I hooked up on it. Oh, they're big, they're big. There's a couple big girls in there. Come on, just give me five juicies, then I'll leave you alone. Gosh. This one's coming out, got him good come here baby they're good ones god you want to talk about working for them Hadn't, having to put on my hard hat to get these bad boys <laughs> these bad girls i could tell you that was probably gonna be about a 12 inch first one i lost was probably a 14. just had that girth 
Good news is we've got a spot. We can probably pluck a couple now. All right, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of this mayhem sauce here. Just to see, just to see. That's gonna make a difference. Could be the color, could be the taste. Some bait fish in there now, I got some competition. All right, now I'm going in here, I'm getting them tight. Getting them on them, on them tight, 10 foot. Oh yeah, come on, come on, doesn't feel big. Doesn't feel big, but it is one. Let's get them fired up. Give them a rally call in there. Rally up, put your rally caps on and eat. So in the summertime, what I'm really trying to look for is access to deep water with just about any fish. These crappie, obviously brush is king in the summertime, but I did a video in the winter on fishing bridges and that is also a really good thing to go after. High pressure day doesn't really help, but we have some tools to use at our advantage. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That one just came out and said, hello, I'm here. I'm gonna be a big crop. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, ladies and gentlemen, that's a whop. That's a wop crop. For some reason on that cast, three of them came out and the big one said, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. That's gonna be one of those Texas 14s, man. That's what I, that's what I live for right there. I live for Texas 14s. Although I was just in Maine with John and had one of my best days of crappie fishing with him and Grant and one rod, it was it was so much fun and they were pretty much all 14s. Oh God, the good one. Good one, they like that dead stick. Oh, oh my God. Got him. Big heads. God, there's a big. Took me forever to get a bite. The one I just missed was the same size. Phew! Lone Star 13, baby, going on the ice. God, these things. Ah, uh, it's been 10 minutes. Just finally floated over in the right, the right way. I gotta take a break. We'll be right back after these messages. I'm actually feeling something I haven't felt in a while. Oh, before I came out here today, I was feeling some pressure in my, my tumor. If you guys are new to the channel, I, uh, I've had a brain tumor. I've had most of it removed, but still have some left. It's been, uh, it's been bugging me today, uh, right there in that spot and I just had a moment, could be the heat, but this reminds me of like six years ago, whatever it was, when I was fishing on an August day. And uh, I, just had, I just had to sit down and um, I was like, man, what is wrong with me? And then I developed this massive migraine for the next few days and then found out I had a tumor the size of an egg in my head. Wow. I think I'm just gonna take a drive, try to get some air. As much as I love catching Texas 14s, this is not enjoyable at this moment. So I am going to take a little ride. Get some air. Good spot, but it's not feeling good. Well, 
Sorry about the drama, boys. Not at my best. Had to kind of come over here under the shade here. But um, bridges are another excellent place for summertime sloppy crappies. Why? Same reason I'm sitting under here. The shade. All right. Having a little bit of equilibrium issue. Shake it off. Just like Taylor Swift says. Crappy time. Little crappy time. Uh oh. Uh oh. Spotlight getting a little confused under the bridge. So the two, the two spots that I've looked at and that I've I've been fishing here there's sunken brush on these posts on these big pilings you don't have to have brush but of course it helps with crappie they just love it and if you don't have forward you just want to make sure you're counting down so you know how how deep you are when you get a bite. It's really important to know the depth. Just had another one there. Oh, you like that little swim up, okay. Getting a lot of bites on these little ones from, on the snacky swimmer. And uh, I'm really not dead sticking it. I'm just kind of moving it up and down. Not something I normally do. I usually like to cast it out and swim it. They are liking this. They're liking this little move here. And when you're going after these summer crappie, you're gonna run into a, a lot of bluegill. They kind of live in the same spots. The bluegill are gonna be a Tap, 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 tap. They got that small mouth. They're just trying to rapid fire on that thing to get it. Whereas a crappie will just, it's a thump. Even the little ones will just thump it. Same size. And that one's borderline, borderline keepo. Let's see, if you make it back, buddy, if you make it back, I'll let you go. Uh, I'm gonna let you go anyways. That's probably the biggest one down there. There's another one. Found a little juicier spot just on the outside. Little crappy time. On to the next one. Okay, I think I'm in the right area. Shouldn't hold a ton of crappie, but I think it'll hold a couple of magnets. What the hey, I might have found what I was looking for. There might be some bass on it though. Bass on my worm. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. The Mondo worm got chomped. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is put a fresh one on because those are big boys. A little sprayed grass action on them. Yes, I'm battling between them. Are these big crappie or are they bass? These are moving like bass. Obviously I just had one pick up the worm that I was so ready to just lean on. But here's what, here's the scenario, this is what it looks like. There's a, a tree out there and then there's a rock behind it. And uh, there's a couple of bass cruising around that rock. You can see one on top right here. One was kind of hovering around that tree. They keep kind of going back and forth. There's another something swimming in right there. Something gigantic, but right there, that's what we're trying to get, that guy. All right, you ready? Mondo worm, let's send it. 
That's a cast. That's a cast. Oh, there it is. I've got it. That's... I don't know what that is. It's not a bass. Something tapping it. Oh, now it's got it. Oh, sh I thought I had a giant. You ever had that happen? Something chewed it up. I don't know if it was a little one, but I just wasn't digging it. I wasn't feeling it. it wasn't, didn't feel big to me. I only set the hook on a big worm if it's tugging like that first one. Are you ready for what's to come? Just please smash the like button if you think Creed is underrated. I've come alive again. I'm dying of thirst, but I'm, I've come alive. Melon out there. I want this melon. Oh my God. Smoked. Smoked it. Smoked it when I was hopping it. But let go. There he is. Come on, take it. There we go. Oh my God, it happened again. Boy, that felt good. That's a thumbnail. Let's call it. Oh my God, I can't break this. Strongest line ever. On. On. It's a bias. That's all it takes. You just gotta put on your crappie bait. Not the one I wanted. But it is a bias. Oh, I so dearly wanted to end the day on a green one. And here we have a green one. Snacky swimmer coming through. I'm telling you, there are some tag gum hog jammers living down there. That's one of the little peanuts. That's a little peanut. No, yeah. Crappies in the box, bass in hand. Felt bad, overcame it. Let's give it a sniff. Oh, yeah, baby. Let him go. Goodbye, my little green friend. Thanks for playing along. All right, I was just filming a little Instagram story of uh, how much water, a little game. How much? How many seconds will water come out of my boat? It's got a crack in it now. I like to save it for the end, and just kind of see. So that was about two minutes ago. We're still rocking. It's nice, you can get a little foot wash. Wash your feet, cool down. Get a little bath. You squat down and take a little bath right there. God, that feels good. I am so thirsty right now. I drank all of my water on the lake, and first thing I'm doing when I'm leaving here is I'm getting a, a tall, cold drink to hydrate. Still going. Still bopping. We had about five inches of water in there. Uh, batteries are charging right here, and this is going to be our little cleaning station for the day. So I have a dream. I have a dream for my fish cleaning station at the next house. For now, we're just cleaning on the tailgate at the boat. Um, but I've, I've had this idea for years, even before we were uh, looking for a house of how I could build a cleaning station that is uh, really clean, sustainable, and just a joy to work with. Now let's clean a couple crops. I actually keep a uh, keep fillet knife right in the boat. Gotta do it. But you're gonna be using the, um, the old timer lithium here. Let's rock. We'll see how our cooler in the Vexus did. Had these on ice. I bought a 20 pound bag yesterday. There's definitely still ice in there and they they're chilled, I would say chilled. You know, probably should have put a little more ice on top, but it'll be perfect for what we're trying to do. Nice ones. 
Nice tasty eaters. Well, bam. a clean cut crappie. So my little method of cleaning crappies, I, I like using electric fillet when it's, especially when I got a bunch of them. But then I like to take just a standard knife to cut out the ribs after I use the electric. You can cut out that rib cage, and on a real big one you could maybe cut, you know, keep some of that meat, but I usually don't. It's usually pretty red anyways. But you get a nice, you get that nice little extra bottom part there, that V. Absolutely gorgeous summer sloppy crappies. They're not so sloppy on the eating. They're just sloppy when you're trying to catch them in 100 degrees. Alrighty guys, just like that, we are done filleting and done with today's video. If you are interested in uh, some recipes, I've got a whole lineup of catching cooks that I've done. You can go back, watch some of those videos. Um, I'm always playing around with different ways I can cook, cook crappie. Obviously the fan favorite, it's the golden crispy. We all love it. But I like to switch it up every once in a while. You got a cookie? Why'd you get a cookie? You must've did something good, brother. That's fish. That is fish, that's right. We eat a lot of fish around here, so all the kids. All the kids get excited about the fish because it's like little nuggets. Anyways guys, summer crappies, where do you look for them in your lakes? They're gonna need access to deep water, but it doesn't mean that's super deep. You know, don't look in, into the fathoms down there. A lot of times they're gonna be in that 12 to 15 foot zone. That's just most lakes. If they've got cover, if they have shade, especially uh, under marina docks, under bridges, brush, anywhere that there's current, uh, that's going to be a good spot. And if you want to pick up any of the baits that I was using today, it's linked down in the description. Uh, again, you can use my promo code LFG, save at checkout anytime. But we do have a sale popping off uh, starting this weekend, starting tomorrow. So go visit the site if you want to pick up some baits on a discount. And I hope you join me again for another outdoor adventure by subscribing to the channel. I'll see you then.